Hey, I'm Shane. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between file formats. I'll be focusing on JPEG, RAW, and uncompressed RAW files, and the pros and cons of using these different file formats. So, brace yourself, this is going to be a little bit of a drier video topic, because I'm going to be talking about file formats. I'm going to be discussing raw and uncompressed raw files as well as JPEG files and the key differences between these file formats. This video is going to be focused very much so towards newer photographers and just discussing the fundamentals of these file formats. However, later in the video, I'll be discussing the differences between raw and uncompressed raw files, which will hopefully bring some value to the table for those who have been taking photos for a while. In this video, I'm going to be using images from Sony cameras. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the comparisons because they may not be apples to apples with whatever camera that you use. However, the concepts completely are the same from any camera manufacturer. It's just going to be a difference in how much the images are compressed. So if you're new to photography, the first thing you might be asking yourself is what on earth is the difference between a RAW and a JPEG file? And the fundamental difference is that a raw file is a less compressed file format and a JPEG file is already a compressed image format. It's easier to explain if you're thinking about cookies. If you look at a raw file, this is more like cookie dough in the shape of a cookie, whereas a JPEG file is a completely cooked crispy cookie. You can't change the JPEG file. However, it is a very complete package already. Whereas a raw file requires some cooking or editing to get it to the same level as a JPEG. However, you can choose what shape it's going to be in and how crispy or how soft you want it to be, giving you more room to edit. This is because a raw file format actually contains more data in it and the files are typically significantly larger than a JPEG file. By significantly larger, I mean from 20 to 40 megabytes large whereas a regular JPEG file ranges anywhere from five to 20 megabytes, which means that if you're looking to save space, a JPEG file is gonna be a much smaller image format. In order to achieve this, a camera applies a picture profile and sharpens a JPEG image, and then saves the image in a smaller compressed file format by saving groups of pixels that are similar in the image together to make it have a little bit more efficiency when packaging that file. However, a raw file is saved pixel by pixel, so it's significantly less sharp because there is no sharpening done to the image in the file, making it look dull and often a little bit bland in terms of color. So right out of camera, a JPEG file is going to look a little bit nicer. However, the differences between a raw file and a JPEG file become very clear if you take the image into Lightroom or any editing software. With a properly exposed image, the differences aren't very obvious. However, the moment you try pushing a RAW file in any sort of way, it will hold up to editing much better. For instance, if I raise the highlights the same on a RAW file in a JPEG file, the RAW file is going to have more detail in the white parts of the image than a JPEG file will. And the same applies to the shadows. If I raise the brightness of the shadows in a raw file, there's going to be a more natural appearing gradient and a lot more detail in those shadows. Whereas on a JPEG file, there just is no information there. So it often looks a little artifacty and grainy when you start raising the brightness of shadows in an image. This becomes even more obvious if you have an underexposed or overexposed image a raw file is just going to do way better. And when you're new at photography, this can become a pretty invaluable benefit because if you're taking a photo and you miss the exposure, you can still recover it in editing. This is the best practice because you want to get the photos right in camera to make it easier for yourself and get higher image quality. However, you still want to get the photo. So shooting in raw is kind of objectively better in those situations. With that all said though, you might be asking yourself now, why on earth do cameras by default shoot in a JPEG format? And that's because there still are some benefits to a JPEG file. 
the biggest of which is that a JPEG file is a smaller image format. And if you take it, it will look better when it comes out of the camera right away. So if you're a new photographer or if you're trying a camera out in the store and you take an image, you want your images to look as best as possible if you don't plan on doing any editing. And in professional situations like photojournalism or sports photography, you want your images to be ready to post as quickly as possible. And if you're transferring the images over Wi-Fi or a wireless transfer of some sort, you want to have the file formats a lot smaller to make it better to transfer quickly. So often, if you're doing sports photography or fast paced journalism, a JPEG file format is going to be preferred just because of the faster turnaround time. The last benefit of a JPEG file is for speed. And this is also related to the file size. On most cameras, your buffer will fill up way quicker if you're shooting in a raw file format, just because it takes a while to transfer those files onto the memory card. Whereas a JPEG file is so much smaller, it's much quicker to transfer onto the memory card, giving you more time when you're taking a burst of photos. On my A7R 3 I can go significantly longer if I'm shooting in a JPEG format versus a raw format which makes it better for some fast paced wildlife photography, or as I said earlier, sports photography. So the differences between shooting in a raw file format and a JPEG file format are quite obvious and there's clear pros and cons to each of them. However, shooting a compressed raw file format versus an uncompressed raw file format is much more of a nuanced difference. And this is ultimately a good thing because it means the compression of a compressed raw file is good. However, it's hard to explain in a video what the differences are. The most obvious one is the file size. An uncompressed raw file can range anywhere from 40 to 90 megabytes large, whereas a compressed raw file is usually between 20 and 40 megabytes. This is a huge impact on storage space and it functionally requires you to have double the amount of storage space for any image you take. And if you're shooting in an uncompressed raw file format, it can fill up a hard drive very, very quickly, making it already a really hard sell for most people because storage costs money in an uncompressed raw file takes up an insane amount of space. And the difference in quality is very hard to see. If you have the same proper exposure on an image, a compressed raw file and an uncompressed raw file are virtually indistinguishable. In a YouTube video, it's really hard to see it either. The most obvious difference though is when you have an extreme difference in exposure. By this I mean the highlights are completely blown out and the shadows are completely underexposed. The situations where this is obvious is when you're shooting out of a window um, inside and you want the outside to be exposed as well as the indoor area or if you're in like a very poorly lit urban environment and you have street lights or some very large bright objects in the frame though these situations are even hard to replicate the issue in the only times I've seen the difference between a raw and an uncompressed raw file format is when I'm doing some landscape photography and I'm inside a cave or I'm in a forest and I'm bringing up the shadows on a very dark area of the image. There can be this strange magenta in green ring pattern that shows up around the frame. Though, when these images are getting shifted this much, it's already a garbage image and not really worth editing at all because it's completely under or overexposed for what you're doing. So I would never recommend shooting in an uncompressed raw file format unless you need to shoot in these situations. Overall, a compressed raw file is going to have all the sharpness that you need in all the color information to edit the photo very well um, without sacrificing an entire hard drive pretty much to save an image file. So that's basically it for the video. The biggest recommendation that I have is that you yourself try out these different image files so you can actually see the difference in practice and see what works best for you. 
most of the time in a compressed raw file is going to be your best bet because it gives you the most leverage for editing and the best compression for storage space. However, as I said, trying it yourself will help you understand your camera better and ultimately hopefully get some better images out of it. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you have an awesome day and that you're staying safe. If you have any questions about the video or uh, addition to what I talked about in the video, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos from me, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe and like this video. But anyways, again, hope you have an awesome day. Thanks for watching and have a good one. See ya.